Hi, I'm Daniel Lundberg. I'm going to give you some information on a metabolic bone disease called Paget's disease of the bone. Paget's disease, osteitis deformans, is the second most common metabolic bone disease affecting the aging adult population. It's second to osteoarthritis and it affects approximately 3% of the population over the age of 50. It's a slow progressing disease and it often goes unrecognized and untreated until it has progressed to an advanced stage. It's named after Sir James Paget, a British surgeon who discovered the disease in 1877. It's described as a disorder of bone remodeling in which there's extensive bone resorption followed by excessive bone formation that results in bone that's architecturally unsound. Normal bone goes through constant remodeling. Osteoclasts remove bone while osteoblasts build new bone at an equal rate. In Paget's disease, there's an increased number of osteoclasts in pagetic legions of bone. During the initial osteoclastic phase, the abnormal osteoclast resorption is so rapid that the osteoblast cannot keep up and fibrous tissue replaces the bone. The initial resorption is followed by abnormal bone growth called osteoblastic sclerotic phase. In this phase, the number of osteoblasts are increased. They rapidly lay down new bone that is coarse and irregularly thickened. This arrangement of new bone has a mosaic pattern. And here you can see a histologic slide of the mosaic pattern of, of someone with Paget's disease. And over here is a histologic slide of early stage. And you can see osteoclast formation right here. And then in an advanced stage, you can see a buildup of osteoclast right here in that cell. The new bone formed in these lesions is poor in quality and weakened due the, to the disorganized arrangement. Paget's disease is rarely seen in people under 35 and becomes more prevalent in those over the age of 50. It occurs in males and females but is slightly more prevalent in males. It's seen in many countries and is most common in people of European descent. It's rarely seen in Asian and African populations. It's thought that genetics play a role in the pathogenesis of the disease. There's also evidence of a measles virus protein in the pagetic bone lesion and studies are being done to see if there's a correlation. It's believed that the viral infection alone does not cause Paget's disease. The main bones that are affected are the pelvis, vertebrae, skull, femur, and tibia, although any bone can be affected. The skin over the pagetic lesions is usually warm due to increased blood flow in the area. Bone pain, arthritis, fractures, and skeletal deformities can result from this disease. Long bones in the leg tend to bow due to their poor structure. You can see here a drawing of a normal person versus someone with Paget's disease. And then here is another person who has Paget's disease and you can see the bowing right here in the tibia. The skull can become lar enlarged causing headaches or hearing loss. Abnormal bone growth in the spine can lead to compression of the nerve root or spinal cord causing pain and impairment. Hip pain is common when the disease affects the pelvis. Advanced stages of the disease can manifest to a cancer called osteosarcoma. Fortunately, this is rare. Sarcoma occurs in less than 1% of those with Paget's disease, but the prognosis is often fatal. Paget's disease generally progresses slowly and usually exhibits very few symptoms or is asymptomatic. Its progression varies considerably between individuals. Most diagnoses are found incidentally as a result of radiographs or lab tests done for other reasons. Paget's disease can be diagnosed through radiology, radionuclide bone scanning, and biochemical testing. The disease can be seen on x-rays, and some common characteristics seen are a decrease in joint space, osteolytic lesions, and enlarged bone. And here you can see a picture of a pelvis that has Paget's disease, and you can see the increased bone growth right there. For a radionuclide bone scan, a radio labeled biphosphonate is injected into the blood and concentrates in areas of bone where there's increased blood flow and bone formation. This test is used to see the full extent of the disease activity and is not used to monitor the effects of treatment. Biochemical tests measure biochemical markers of bone turnover, which represent an increase in osteoclast activity. The marker that is moved that is measured is an enzyme serum alkaline phosphatase, which is the most sensitive marker for the disease activity. Elevated levels of alkaline phosphatase can help rule out arthritis and other disorders and pinpoint Paget's disease as the cause. 
There are many impairments associated with the change in shape and size of the bone, which may result in pain, arthritis, fractures, and deformities. All the disease, as this disease, disease progresses, it could severely impact daily life. Pain is the most common symptom. It's usually perceived in the form of headaches, osteoarthritic, or muscular pain. This pain often leads to less physical activity in daily life, which can lead to limitations like walking slower or shorter distances. There is no known cure for Paget's disease. The objectives of treatment are to slow the disease process and prevent complications. It's important to minimize symptoms and improve the patient's physical function. There are four methods of treatment, and these are pharmacological therapy, pain management, surgery, and physical therapy. Pharmacological therapy is directed at inhibiting osteoclast formation through the use of bone resorption inhibitors. Biphosphonates are primarily used for this. Biphosphonates reduce bone turnover by suppressing the osteoclast activity, improving bone density, and reduce the incidence of fractures. Response to treatment is measured by testing the total alkaline phosphatase. Vitamin D and oral calcium calcium supplementation are recommended to reduce hypocalcemia. Pain management de depends on the degree of pain. Analgesics and NSAIDs are also used to control the pain as well as physical therapy. Surgery may be necessary to repair fracture of a pagetic bone. Occipital craniectomy can be used to relieve nerve compression or joint replacement if severe degenerative joint disease is present. Physical therapy is important in rehabilitating patients with Paget's disease. Some interventions used include exercise and pain management. Exercise is very important in maintaining skeletal health and building bone mass. Resistance training is important to provide a weight-bearing stimulus to bone. In order to increase bone mass, the intensity of challenge must be gradually increased and must exceed the level of challenge the bone is already adapted to. The bone remodeling process appears to respond best to exercises that are diverse, involve different loading situations, and use strains that are imposed at fast rates like jumping or running. Strengthening muscles can maintain muscle mass and strength while reducing skeletal complications associated with bone abnormalities. Muscle pain can be reduced with exercise, and exercise can also reduce the risk for fractures and falls. Stretching, endurance, aerobics, balance, and coordination exercises are all important. The patient's feeling of well-being is often improved with participation in physical activities. The therapist may need to adjust the exercise if the patient has a fracture or a deformity from the disease. Pain is managed with the use of TENS, ultrasound, cold packs, and hot packs. Physical therapists may assist with the training and the use of orthotics to compensate for a deformity. Education of proper body mechanics Proper use of exercise equipment and a variety in the exercise program is also important. It's important for physical therapists to be aware of the signs and symptoms of Paget's disease. These include headache, pain, fractures, nerve compression, tinnitus, lightheadedness, and dizziness. It is also important for the therapist to be aware of side effects of the medications that are taken for the disease. There may be precautions associated with the medications that could affect therapy. Some examples include indigestion, nausea, vomiting, hearing loss, and vertigo. There are no contraindications to therapeutic exercise that specifically relate to Paget's disease, but there may be some due to surgery, medication, or a pre-existing condition. The therapist is on the front lines and needs to know what to look for and what questions to ask. For many patients, the disease may be asymptomatic or expressed as pain and treated as arthritis. In conclusion, Paget's disease affects nearly 3% of all Americans over the age of 50. If left undiagnosed and untreated, Paget's disease can lead to chronic pain, deformities, and other health problems like osteoarthritis. Healthcare professionals need to be aware of the disease so they can make the recommendation for diagnosis during its early stage. When a diagnosis is made early, the treatment will be more effective and will have a less devastating effect on the patient. An early diagnosis will give the patient a better chance at a higher quality of life. Thank you. Please post any questions you have about Paget's disease on Blackboard.